Okay, guys, I'm here today with Gordon Ryan, huge honor for me. Guys, Gordon is just is shooting like uh, one of his next instructional videos, which is going to be all about pinscapes, like side control, north-south, and mountscapes. And uh, Gordon, I mean, like, I think that's one, probably one of your favorite subjects. Right? I have been talking with you lately, and uh, guys, Gordon was telling me like how when he's training against very high-level athletes nowadays, he's even letting them get in the mount just to see how good they are at mount attacks. And then he gets out from the mount and go for shoulder crunch like that. That that's that's unbelievable. Like, uh, but anyways, uh, can you explain a little more about this instructional? Yeah. So we're gonna look at uh, we're gonna look at pin escapes and um, pin escapes are very interesting because there's only there's a limit to how much system like how much you can systematize uh, pin escapes. Uh, so the main idea we're gonna be working with is the idea of uh, cranium control. Whenever you're in north-south, uh, sorry, in side control or mount, you have to understand that in order for your partner to be able to attack you, they have to, um, and pin you, they have to be able to control your head and shoulders in some way, okay? Um, the one exception to this rule is north-south, okay? If you're looking at guard passing, for example, if I wanna pass Bernardo's guard and actively attack him, if I wanna pass him to side control or to north-south, the only way that I can effectively pass his guard and go for submissions is to have some kind of control over his head and shoulders okay in north south north south is the one exception that's why you see very high level guard players get passed to north south because you don't need to make a cranial shift you don't have to control the head and the shoulders in order to effectively pass your partner's guard if i'm passing to side control for example i can get past his legs this means nothing i can't attack him until i go in and i control the head and the shoulders I can pass the mount, but this means nothing. I can't attack him because the elbow is inside. You can knee elbow escape to either side. But once I control the head and the shoulders, now I can control him and I can start to attack him. With north-south, this isn't the case. If I go in and I go in north-south, I can still uh, pass his guard from here without any control of his head. And from here, I can start to go in and isolate his arms. I don't have to have direct control over his head. This is the one exception. So for us, working from bottom position, this is gonna be a game based around separation of your partner from your head and shoulders. So it's a pretty simple battle, okay? Now, winning the battle is not easy, but the idea itself is simple. Bernardo right now has all the inside position. His hip is inside my elbow, he has the underhook, he has a strong cross face. I'm losing the battle for inside position. If you asked me to bridge and try to escape from here as hard as I could, with this exact hand position, I could try to escape until tomorrow and I'd still be here. There's no way that I can get Bernardo off me with all this outside position. But if we change this to a situation where I dominate all the inside positions, now if you ask Bernardo to hold me, he couldn't yep. hold me for more than a few seconds. Yep. Okay. So the question is, how can I incrementally fight my hands, my elbows, my knees, and my feet back to the inside position and create a situation where he no longer has control over my head and shoulders, okay? So the, the basic idea is incrementally fighting my limbs back to the inside position until I can separate his hands and create a disconnection where now he has no control over my head, okay? And now once he has no control over my head and I incrementally steal the inside position, now I can escape and go into counter attacks. And it's the same idea for mount. If Bernardo has me mounted, he has control over my head and shoulders from here i can't do any escapes and he can attack me from here so my whole thing is how can i create some kind of disconnect between my head or between him and my head and shoulders where now from here we can bring hands back inside so he has no control over cross face or anything like that anymore and then we can incrementally fight limbs back to the inside position okay mm -hmm. and finally from north south the one exception where he's behind me and he doesn't have to have any control over my head from here, we looked at situations where we can either, one, bring everything back inside by just bringing elbows inside and lifting, or finding ways to start creating angles to convert him back to a perpendicular angle where now he's more in the side control than he is in north-south. Or if he, doesn't, if he doesn't move from this position because he has no control over my head and hips, I can walk away. So this will force Bernardo to try to reach back and cross-face me, and this is the perfect time now to bring hands back inside deny him control over the head and from here bring everything back to the inside position.
okay? So we play a general game where if we are in side control or north-south, we are trying, sorry, side control or mount, we are trying to create uh, Kazushi off balances to bring our limbs back to the inside position and find ways to get our head in a situation where it's not being head and shoulders in a situation where they aren't being controlled by my partner's upper body. And in north-south, we're trying to either bring everything back inside right from the beginning or convert to an angle where he's then forced to go back to a situation where he has to control my head and shoulders in order to control me and we can intercept the hands, bring everything back inside and then create that disconnection between him and our head and shoulders. Yeah. Gordon, can you just repeat the sequence again? Because I'm gonna ask you some questions Probably. and just so we do like slow motion, so side control first. So I got your head and arm. So your goal is to put everything inside, let's say. Like you wanna put your left yeah. elbow inside. You want, I noticed like that the first time you did, even your elbow came underneath my arm. A little bit, you, yeah. You do that on purpose or yeah. that just uh, happened? I, I want my right elbow to eventually come inside your left shoulder. So I want Got it as it. close to the target as possible. So I put it right here. Got Same it. thing with my left knee. I want okay. my left knee inside okay. your left hip. So I start with my left knee connected to your left hip. Okay. So if at any point now you try to move to a mounted position or knee on belly, I got it. the knee and elbow connect. I got it. Now I have that strong knee and elbow connection. I have my right hand inside. I have my left elbow inside and I have my left knee inside. Yep. The only thing stuck outside right now is my right foot and my right elbow. So from here, I play a game where I go in and I lock my hands and now I just step on my own foot. When you go to keep your hands locked from here, it's a pretty easy thing to separate those Man, hands. That's incredible. And now I can always bring right knee to right elbow. I bring my left hand back that's to the incredible. inside. And now I dominate all of the inside position. And he has no ability to put body weight onto my torso. Good. And then from moments, it's almost like the same thing, kind of, right? But you, what do you do with the left arm over here? So for this particular kipping escape that we looked at before, I take my left hand inside Bernardo's hip and I take my left knee, or left elbow, inside Bernardo's uh, right knee, okay? So now I feel the inside position with my hand with my elbow. It doesn't look like much, but this gives me the ability to start bridging and off balance Bernardo to my right. So when he goes to lock in tight, I can start bridging and I can start getting to a position where I get him off balance with weight onto one of his knees. And now the kipping motion brings my knees to the inside position. And that's amazing. Now my knees inside, now I have to get my right, my right arm is still stuck to the outside. So my knees are inside, I have to clear the cross face. So I strip the grip off, I slide my right elbow to the inside, and now he has no control over my head, I dominate all the inside position, oh, and now I can go right back into counter offense. Incredible. So a big theme is going to be escaping from a defensive cycle right into an offensive cycle where we can go right back into attacks. Man, that's amazing. And then from the north south, uh, you either go like, you either bring your elbow and the in, yeah. or you start switching to the nine degrees. So, so there's usually two situations we can find ourselves in here, and we'll dive into this in detail in the instructional. If Bernardo's on his knees, I generally prefer to bring elbows inside, and I can always lift and just bring knees to elbows. Yep. So now Bernardo goes to put pressure on me, I have all the, inside yep. all the inside real estate, and we can look to start putting ourselves back in front. When you start running into more talented people, they will often tripod, just like this. So now all the weight's coming down towards my hips. I can't lift with my body to bring this full body weight off me. So whenever I see this, I have to find ways to get hands on him and then start walking to an angle, like so. So now his body is in the same position he would be in as if he was in side control. So now he's not in north-south, which means he has to control my head. If he doesn't control my head and my shoulders from here, it's the easiest thing to just strip yeah. and walk away and bring everything inside. And if I do... So now, as he goes to control my head, I know this is coming, and I can always intercept the arm. So now when he goes to control my head and shoulders, he can't. And now it's a pretty easy thing to start working limbs back to the inside, yeah, that's incredible. intercepting the arm, and recovering into attacking positions. Well, Gordon, I have asked you this question 100 times already, but I'm going to ask also again, because maybe who is watching over there didn't you know, hear, but your escapes, it's a huge part of your confidence, right? Yeah. I, I find that uh, John gave the best example one time, and he was talking about if you're a guy who is in mount, yeah. and you know that your guard sucks and you can't escape pins, the chances of you going for an arm bar from top mount, knowing that if you lose it, you'll be pinned in bottom position for the rest of the round, drastically decreases. Yep. But if you know 
that if you go for that arm bar and you lose it and you end up with your back taken or pinned or in a submission, that you can immediately escape and go right back into an attack. The chances of you going for that arm bar drastically increase. I agree. Um, so I think that the foundation of offense is based around strong defensive posture and confidence. No, no that makes sense. No, that makes sense. Yeah, and, and everything it almost becomes a snowball because if you go to that submission, now your percentage of submissions increase because your percentage of submissions increase, you probably don't use to yes. don't need to use so much escapes and man, that's incredible. No, that's amazing. There's there's nothing worse than being caught in defensive cycles for long amounts of time where guys pin you for six minutes out of a ten minute match. You're carrying their body weight. You're exhausted. You're mentally fatigued. Uh, your morale's down, and you just physically can't get out of the pin. Um, there's something to be said for having the best guys in the world to try their absolute hardest to hold you down, and they mount you, you put, let them put their arm over the head, and then you just immediately escape right back into an attack. Um, th that, that is where confidence comes from. Knowing that if you end up in the worst position in the sport, you can recover within 30 seconds and go right back into attacks. Yeah, no, and the one thing that you do that it's, it, it, just, just like in the mount position here, like you got out, and man, you had my heel over there, you do a heel hook right after, yeah. like, uh, and you do like shoulder crunch from there. You do, you don't just escape. You escape and go to your favorite position and start a new sequence from there. So. Yeah, well, because what everyone shows is they show escape into a neutral position. Like you close go from guard. you go from a mount to a half guard to a close guard. So you go from a defensive cycle into a neutral position, and then someone goes into an offensive cycle with attacks. But if you can cut out the middleman and just go from a oh, defensive oh. cycle right into an offensive cycle, it's much better because you want to be spending as much time in a defense or as in an offensive cycle as you can. What you don't want is to be halfway through an escape with no threat to your partner, and then they just start another offensive cycle, and now you're caught in this long-lasting defensive yeah. cycle. Yeah, no, man, that makes a lot of sense, and then that's true. Like this middleman here, it's how every jiu-jitsu school teaches yes. how to escape in the world, you know, like, and then. Go from mounts to close guard, and then close guard, you figure out what and you're going to do. Go to attack. side control to half guard or to close guard, and then you... Exactly. Man, that's incredible. Yeah. So, guys, Gordon just shot this entire structure all about ping escapes, side control escapes, mount escapes, and north-south escapes. It's coming out, like, amazing, and the, it's going to be at bjjfanatics.com very soon. So, maybe by the time you're watching, it's already there. So, make sure to check that out. And thanks so much, Gordon. Thank you. It was... Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel. Just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jujitsu faster.